In the beginning, there was nothing. A vacuum, void, empty space. And in this empty space, there emerged a primordial fireball. Billions of years ago, this fireball exploded. This explosion generated all space, energy, matter. The universe expanded rapidly, producing electrons, neutrinos, photons, and quarks. Soon, this energy began interacting, forming protons and neutrons. Matter continued colliding and interacting. Over time, the first simple elements formed. These elements also collided as the primordial soup continued to expand. Cosmic and particulate evolution continued, and stars began to group, forming into the earliest galaxies. And then, just five billion years ago, something wondrous occurred. Within a cloud of gas in a spiral arm of the Milky Way galaxy, our sun formed. This new star gave birth to planets, moons, and asteroids. One of these planets, known as Earth, developed an atmosphere. Earth's environment, believed to be filled with volcanic eruptions, lightning, turbulent weather, mixed atoms and energy to create the first simple living cells. and natural selection, algae, jellyfish, and flatworms appeared. As evolution continued, fish appeared in the seas on planet Earth. Some of these fish developed into amphibians and through natural selection changed into reptiles. A segment of these reptiles evolved into a variety of creatures, including mammals. Some of these mammals became primates and then just 600,000 years ago an isolated group of these primates evolved into man's earliest ancestors. This is our amazing evolutionary heritage and evolution continues today as we evolve to our even higher destiny in the universe. of origins. How did the universe and all things that we see here on this planet come into being? Why do we exist? Hi, I'm Roger Oakland. Most of us have pondered these questions. And when it comes to the subject of origins, there are basically two views, the evolution theory and the creation theory. During the 20th century, the world was led to believe that evolution brought about all things. Our universe, the earth, and all life came into existence as a result of an explosion of matter in billions of years of time. However, there are others who believe the observable evidence points towards a creator. So how can we know? What does the observable evidence indicate? and creation scientists have observed and agree that there is great variety within each species. 
Darwin noticed this variety and adaptability among finches. He noticed that the finches' beaks varied in size and shape, and that the beak's features affected the survivability of the finch. Today we notice a great variety of dogs. It is believed that all 450 breeds of dogs present today had a common ancestor. Most scientists believe that this ancestor was very similar to the present-day wolf. Scientists also witness natural selection or survival of the fittest. Evolutionists and creationists agree that those animals that are the strongest, healthiest, or most adaptive to their environment are more likely to survive and go on to reproduce. The weaker animals, which are unable to adapt, are less likely to survive. We also observe gene mutations occurring. The DNA in all living organisms contains all the genetic information of life. Sometimes an error is introduced in this genetic code. This is called a mutation. Mutations often cause disease and can be induced by radiation, chemical agents, or replication errors. Mutations really do occur. They make all kinds of changes in genes. Uh, birth defects, disease, disease organisms, they're great at explaining the, the origin of disease, death, and disaster, not at all at explaining the origin of something new, uh, some new trait that never exists. All the mutations we know about are only changes in genes that already exist. Darwin observed many things in, in nature. He was a good naturalist, a good observer of information. What he saw was various uh, plants and animals altering somewhat uh, through, through adaptation, through variation. Uh, he saw them uh, change. We never see one basic type of something changing into something else. That has never been observed in science or in, in genetics. It just has never been observed. What we see is variety. Variety happens, adaptation happens, evolution doesn't happen. Mutations, natural selection, adaptation. These are some of the observations that both evolutionists and creationists agree upon. But in spite of the agreements, there are substantial differences. And so the debate rages on. I mean, you have, you have such, such a wide variety of, of life. And I don't think it's possible for one person, I mean, no matter how powerful he might be, to just snap his fingers and create life. It has to come out naturally over millions of years, probably. Uh, I don't believe in the theory of evolution. Uh, you know, more and more, um, even secular scientists uh, are changing their viewpoints uh, because the evidence doesn't support their conclusions. Half of me believes in the theory of evolution, probably because that's what I was taught. Four years of studies, unfortunately, um, have kind of brainwash me towards evolution. We begin where evolutionists say it all began. With the Big Bang and the evolution of the universe. One interesting aspect of evolutionary theory is that it's such, it's such a powerful theory and it exercises such a strong hold over the imaginations of scientists that they've applied it outside the biological realm. They've applied it to inanimate things as well. They've applied it to the chemical elements, to stars, to galaxies. Uh, it's said that, um, that the universe itself is evolving. Did the Big Bang trigger the formation of galaxies, stars, planets, and ultimately, life? Is there any order coming out of a big explosion? I would say not in any way. Explosions cause chaos, and random distribution of various parts that were there perhaps as a, a united organization beforehand. Any explosion re renders that completely null and void. There is no evidence to my mind that an explosion or even the Big Bang Theory can ultimately produce organized beings like ourselves or any other animal. Evolutionary thinking is applied to most areas of science. The field of evolutionary cosmology proposes that the universe is the result of a random explosion some 15 to 18 billion years ago. There are no examples that I've ever seen where an explosion produced an increase in order. 
Explosions are destructive. They cause spontaneous degeneration, not spontaneous generation. Scientists recognize that all known explosions decrease order and structure and increase chaos. The idea that the cosmos evolved also violates the second law of thermodynamics known as entropy. The second law states that as time advances, the universe becomes less ordered. Over time, all systems left on their own proceed in a direction from order to disorder. All of us witness entropy every day as we see things age and deteriorate. This breakdown of structure directly contradicts the theory of evolution.